بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الحبت في الله i felt it useful and beneficial to have a brief study of the 10 ways that nullify a person's Islam, Nawaqid al-Islam. And we've, stu- we've taught this uh, more than once and we'll continue to teach it because it's so important for us to have uh, the understanding of those things which take you out of the fold of Islam or some of the major sins and that are very common that take a person out of the fold of Islam. And this is based upon the treaties of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. And we will go over and just make some ta'liqat or some uh, brief commentary of an explanation that was pieced together by Dr. Saleh al Saleh rahmatullahi alayh. And we'll go ahead and begin and try to gain some benefits from this very important treaties. So the treaties began, I'lam rahimakallah. No may Allah's mercy be upon you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala far as he removed from every imperfection, the most high, made it very clear that mankind must follow Islam. Hold to it and dis- disassociate from whatever contradicts it. So whatever contradicts Islam, you should disassociate yourself from it. The declaration that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah not only negates all false deities and confirms worship only to Allah, it also requires the complete disassociation from any form of worship to any false deity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al there is no compulsion in religion. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelieves in Taghut, false deities, and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. So, Islam requires from us, as some of the ulama of Islam, they mention when describing the meaning of Islam, that it is istislam lillah bi tawheed wal inqiyad lahu bi ta'a wa khulus min shirk wa ahli that islam by its very meaning the very meaning of islam is al istislam lillah bi tawheed to completely submit to allah in tawheed in monotheism Islam lillah bi tawheed wal inqiyad lahu and firmly adhering to his commandments wal inqiyad lahu wa ta'a and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khulus min shirk and leaving off any and all forms of shirk wa ahli and the people of shirk so that the muslim hafizakum Allah should be ever striving to purify his or her tawheed to make sure that their worship is directed only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as with all of our deeds in Islam if you want your deeds your worship to be accepted it has to be sincerely to Allah devoted to Allah devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has to be in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what makes your worship, your ibadah, pure. Is that it fits those two conditions. That it has sin- you worship Allah sincerely. And you worship Allah in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What are those two categories again? Can you repeat them for me? The two categories of worship, if you want your deeds accepted by Allah, it has, who do you have to worship? The Prophet? Allah. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And who should you follow? The Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he, legis- how he uh, practiced what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him 
of how Allah, how the Prophet Sallallahu worshipped Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. These are the constraints of worship for us. We don't worship how the Hindus worship or how the Christians worship or the Buddhists worship or any other uh, faith worships, but we worship only Allah and how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worshipped Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And furthermore, to declare that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a messenger and slave of Allah, that's a part of the Shahada, requires that the belief that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is trusted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to deliver the message of Islam, and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to be followed and obeyed because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala decreed in the Quran this. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala legislated that, that we follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says wa ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul follow obey Allah and obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so this is what uh, our shahada when we bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah that we are testifying to this faith faith uh, we are testi testifying to this fact that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and we will fulfill that worship in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says fi kitab al -kareem, And whatsoever the Messenger gives you, take it And whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it and fear Allah Verily Allah is severe in punishment So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, what did he come with? He came with the sunnah And what does the sunnah entail? It entails worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone In accordance with how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it All the Messenger of Allah, uh, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala All the Prophets, alayhi who came with the same message of worshiping Allah alone. Allah says this in the Quran. He says, And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worship besides Allah, those deities worship besides Allah. Hafidhukum Allah. Something I want to mention and the brother Rahmatullah he mentioned something with regards to Tagut because there is quite a bit of controversy about the concept of Tagut of, uh, as Allah mentioned in that ayat وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ Tagut that uh, Allah sent to every nation a messenger to worship him and him alone that's Tawheed وَاجْتَنِبُ Tagut and avoid shirk avoid worshipping uh, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Regardless of whether that be leaders Whether that be uh, scholars Whether that be saints Whether that be priests Whether that be imams Whether that be prophets Whether that be the stars Whether that be anything Everything worship by Allah uh, Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is denied Is denied worship So anyone who is pleased with being worshipped and exalted then they fit the meaning of Taghut because we don't say that the prophets alayhim after salatu wasalam or the the angels are Taghut we don't say that and they were not pleased with people committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking them as uh, gods this is what the NBA came to negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ We sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those deities worship besides Him. So they came to establish Tawheed and negate shirk because shirk is the greatest sin. Ta'gud, hafidhakum Allah, it may be Satan or anyone who has worshipped other than Allah and is pleased and are calls for it. Here I relate a very important benefit explaining the issue of Ta'gud, which is often misunderstood by enthusiastic young Muslims. And it is by Sheikh Suleiman ibn uh, Samhan, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, it should be known that the one who seeks judgments from the Tagut are rules by other than Allah's rule, while believing that these judgments are more perfect and better than the judgment of Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then this is kufr, this is disbelief. So meaning that those people who rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, and they believe that their ruling is equal to the Sharia, or better than the Sharia, then they have disbelieved. So that's an important 
important tafsil because many of the tikfiris, I get people all the time commenting and defending ISIS, for example, and saying, you defend the Taghut, but you speak about our brothers, the Mujahideen. Well, for one, they're not making jihad fi sabilillah. They're making jihad for their own uh, distorted extremist ideology. Number two... As far as Taghut, you have to wonder, are they defending the Taghut? Because you don't hear them threatening Bashar. You don't hear them threatening the Rafa, the Shia in Iran, or, or any of those people. But instead, you hear only that they're beheading Muslims. And as a, a Faida, you also see just recently, one of the prisoners that they have is a, a, a guy who's embraced Islam as a prisoner. Automatically, they should free him. There is no way they can still behead him. But only the Takfiri, Khawarij, people who are deviant, would even continue to uh, somehow attempt to justify their evil, wicked, extremist uh, actions. So again, going back to Taghut, what it means... Uh, the Sheikh, uh, he, the, he, he mentioned then, so people who take that uh, as a part of their creed and they believe that the Sharia is either equal or less than uh, other rulership, then they have disbelieved. And that's a part of their ittiqad. And that takes the person out of the fold of Islam as is mentioned in the Ten Nullifiers of Islam. However, as to the one who does not believe as such, but resorted to the Taghut judgment while believing that it to be false, believing that it's false, but they did uh, do this, uh, wick, this major sin then this is of the practical type of disbelief, meaning kufr al-amali, and it is the lesser type of kufr that does not take a person from the, is, from the fold of Islam. In addition, anyone who rule a ruler or the ruled who equates the judgment of Allah and his messengers to that of man or believes that the rules of man are more befitting to our times in the Islamic laws commits kufr. It is therefore concluded that the terms Taghut in itself does not necessarily translate into major disbelief and apostasy. That's so important because these people don't understand that. They never come with tafsil. They take the mujmil and they make their ahkam. They take what is general and then they make specific ahkam al-ra'im from their own desires. This is the case of Ahl al-Bidha qadimin wa hadithin. And so, therefore, concluded the term Taghut in and of itself does not necessarily translate into major disbelief and apostasy, since every kufr is Taghut, but not every Taghut is kufr. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, considered that figurative interpretations of Allah's names and attributes through scholastic ways and giving precedence to the intellect over the legal text as Taghut. So uh, certainly none considers every level of these distortions as major kufr. So that's very important, that tafsil and understanding in accordance with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah that not every form of kufr takes you out of the fold of Islam. And not everyone who falls into kufr takes them out of the fold of Islam. And that's why it's very important to understand takfir with regards to this important treaties and why in my other explanations I went more detail into uh, the issue of takfir and letting us know that not everyone who falls, who does an act of kufr, even it's the major kufr that takes you out of the fold of Islam, is not a kafir. They could have did it by mistake. They could have did it from ta'wil. They could have did it from jahil. They could have been new to Islam. Those are all things which uh, which nullify the ruling of takfir on that individual. Those are the mu'ana, the mu'ana takfir. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and bless us in our study of this treaty. So sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.